Hi everyone, Miss Patsy here. Today we're going to be studying the fifth grade science book, Mixtures and Solutions, Investigation 4, Reaching Saturation, Part 2, Epsom Salt Saturation. Question, does it always take the same amount of solid materials to saturate 50 ml of water? Let's find out. Today we will be making another saturated salt solution. Except today we will be using Epsom salt, which is a magnesium sulfate salt, and yesterday's salt was a sodium chloride salt. So for this investigation, we have Epsom salt, water, a measuring cup, our bottles, a funnel, filter paper, a scale, and our um, data sheet, and an evaporation dish. So the focus question for today is, does it always take the same amount of solid material to saturate 50 ml of water? Remember that to saturate means that it is the maximum amount of salt that can dissolve in 50 ml of water. Last time, it took 15 grams of salt to saturate our 50 ml of water. Do you think that it'll, it will take 15 grams of our Epsom salt to saturate the 50 ml of water? So let's get started. First, I'm going to add 50 ml into my bottle. I'm going to mark the level of the water. And weigh it. Okay. It reads 70 grams for our bottle of water. Similar to yesterday. So I'm gonna write on my sheet that 50 mLs of water in our bottle weighs 70 grams. Next, we will be adding our salt into our bottle. A couple of spoonfuls at a time. Now, do you remember what happens to the salt in the bottle? It dissolves. That means that the salt is soluble in water. If it didn't dissolve, then it would be insoluble. Okay, it looks like it's fully dissolved. Actually, I still see some floating around in there. Or maybe that's bubbles. Well, let's, let's add some more. Now the amount of salt that dissolves in a volume of water is a property called solubility. It's the solute's ability to dissolve in that solvent. Now that that's all dissolved, let's add a couple more.
Now that that's dissolved, let's add a couple more. It is getting cloudier. Assuming that Epsom salt has the same mass as um, regular salt, we've already passed the number of spoonfuls. starting to see some granules on the bottom. But not not as much as the salt. So I want to pass the point of saturation make sure that I get the maximum saturation. So let's add a couple more. Okay, now I have some granules of Epsom salt on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter this out. Now, now that I do have granules on the bottom, do you know what that means? It means that we have reached saturation. It's the maximum amount of salt that 50 ml of water can dissolve. So how much salt did it take to saturate the solution? How, how do you think we can find out? Can I just take the number of spoonfuls? Or can I just weigh my bottle? What do you think? Well, I can't just weigh my bottle because it also has the undissolved salt in it. So that's going to be included in our total. So we wanna filter out the undissolved salts. So I'm gonna get my other bottle and my filter paper and filter out the undissolved salt. see there's a little bit of little bit of salt on the bottom of that now let's look at the the line on my bottle where the 50 mLs ended up and where, how high the level of water is with the salt. It's significantly higher. So now that we filter out the undissolved salt, 
can I weigh my bottle now? The answer is yes. Okay. And this is the weight of the bottle with the salt, 115 grams. Now, do you think that that is the weight of the salt? No, because it's the weight of the salt, the water, and the bottle. So I put the weight of my saturated salt solution in the bottle in the top part. It's, it was 115 grams. And now I need to subtract the weight of the 50 mLs of water and the bottle, which was 70 grams, and that leaves us with 45 grams of salt was added to our bottle. So let's review our focus question. Does it take the same amount of solid material to saturate 50 mLs of water? Let's look at the results from our regular salt. So sodium chloride salt, it weighed 85 grams and we subtracted the water and the bottle weight, which was 70 grams, which means that the salt in the solution weighed 15 grams. And today's results, the Epsom salt in the solution weighed 45 grams. So the answer to our focus question is no. It took almost three times the amount of Epsom salt to saturate 50 mLs of water. And now before we leave, I'm going to pour a little bit of our solution into an evaporation dish for a future investigation. I hope you enjoyed learning about Epsom salt saturation. Until next time, have a great day.